Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. For anyone who celebrated Thanksgiving, I hope you had an enjoyable time. I know I sure did. And anyone watching the World Cup, I wish your country the best. I played soccer all my life and through college, so it's very exciting times for me as well to just see a bunch of games on. But in this episode, we're just going to continue on with our profile screen here and just reacting to the different, you know, states of the user. So at the moment, we just have a uh, button to log in and we can see that the banner here says sign in. It's a pretty plain, you know, variant here when you are in the logged out state. But when you go ahead and click this button and actually sign in, we see the screen kind of update to a whole bunch of more information. If we leave the screen and come back, uh, you know, that information is still retained. We even have a logout feature here that the user can click on and we kind of go back to that original state here. So um, pretty cool, pretty reactive application here. We've got a lot of good stuff to cover for you here. As you can see, a lot of files are green and blue. Uh, so just want to cover them and, and we'll go from there. This really isn't going to be much of a coding you know, video. Instead, it's going to be more of a discussion of how this stuff works because there's kind of a lot to it. So I didn't want to do it on screen. Smash that like button if you're interested. Subscribe if you are brand new uh, you know, to the channel. And we are going to just continue on uh, exploring this work here. And lastly, before we get started here, all this code is available on GitHub. Check it out in the uh, link in the description and you'll have all this stuff at your fingertips. So if we take a look at our fragment underscore profile XML, we have a view here that acts as our header background. We have then a few text views here that act as these main text views that we see. And then we just have an epoxy recycler view. If you're brand new to the channel, epoxy recycler view or epoxy is just uh, a recycler view wrapper, um, but it's basically just a recycler view implementation. And if you've been with the channel for a while, you know what's going on here. So the interesting part here is that we have basically no changes here from an epoxy perspective, but the body of this, uh, you know, screen changes pretty quickly. So we have a signed out version here, so epoxy model profile signed out, and this is the signed out state, right? We saw that log out button, you can see it here. And then we have basically our signed in state and like a little item that we see here, right? We see one, you know, constraint layout with an image view on the left and then two text views that sit right on top of one another. And if we take a look at the screen here when we're signed in, that is the exact pattern that we follow for all of these elements. So we could very easily add additional elements that fit this criteria, you know, with the power of epoxy, we can also very easily support different view types if we wanted to, to have something look a little different. Uh, but for now, you know, this kind of concept of uh, you know, this little title and description seem pretty good, seem pretty standard for some kind of profile based screen. So I'm just going to close these as we get through them. And at this point here, I think it's worth it to go over to the profile fragment. So I have a UI generator, UI item generator that we can bounce into in a little bit that I've added. But the guts of it here, really the whole operation of the screen, everything that fuels the screen really runs within here. So we go ahead and we get our user from the store here. And we can see that this is a flow all right, a flow of user question mark. So a flow of a nullable user. And basically we can go ahead and update our header text view and our info text view, which are these two views over here, right? In this like purple banner based upon, you know, the user and the state of the user. So in the event that the user is null, we're going to hit this Elvis operator and we're going to see the sign in text. And then obviously there is no email on the user. So the, you know, email view, this kind of just goes away and all we see is sign in. Otherwise we have our greeting message and our email displayed, which is, uh, you know, satisfied right there, we can very easily see it. The guts of it happen inside of this epoxy controller where we actually push the user into the epoxy controller. Again, this is a nullable user. And then the contents, the body of this screen changes. So if we take a look here, we can see the profile epoxy controller is built with an item generator and a UI actions class. We'll jump into this in a second, but that's about it. So we go over to this uh, epoxy controller and we can go ahead and see our build models function here has a, uh, a nullable user inside of it. So if our user is null, then we have our signed out state epoxy model. And we go ahead and just provide a little bit of a sign in uh, Lambda here, which gives us the username and password, which we can go ahead and pass on through our profile UI actions. Now this Lambda gets invoked when the user goes ahead and clicks this login button here. Eventually we can uplift this to maybe have, you know, input for email or username and password, but for now, we just have a button that will invoke this callback here. Pretty straightforward stuff. And then otherwise in the non-null case here, we have some, um, you know, the, the body here that we want to display. So we go ahead and ask our item generator to build the items for our particular user. Now this is going to return here 
a list of user profile item generator dot user profile UI item, which I will dive into in a moment. And then we basically can just loop over each one and add in a signed in item epoxy model, which is this particular row here that we see that has the image view and the two text views. And then we pop in the divider epoxy model. We loop through and we cover all of these items that we want to display. And then at the end, we know we always are going to want the logout option at the very bottom, right? So basically these three options here that we see are calculated based upon our user. And then this one here is just a simple logout option, a very standard thing that we're going to have no matter which user is logged in. So we can just add it in after this for loop here. And that's, that's all there is to it. That's literally it. There is just the null case and the non null case. So let's go ahead and dive into the non null case here where we make use of our user profile item generator. Now we take a look here, we see a data class. Uh, that has a few different pieces of information that we need in order to build each row, right? So we have an icon resource, we have the header text, and we have the info text. And as we can see here, that just maps very easily to the UI. This build items function is the one that we invoke inside of the controller, and it's very simple. We simply return this build list operator, which is super convenient, but basically we're just returning a, a mutable list. You can see here, we end up returning just a regular list, but inside of here, we can go ahead and given our user that we pass into this function, we can add in three different items, or we can add in however many we want, right? It doesn't really matter, but in this case, we only do three. So we generate a user profile UI item. And in this case, we use our person icon, we say username, and we pass in user .user. We do the same thing here for a, a phone, we say phone number and the user's phone number. And then we do something a little bit more intense, but nothing too crazy, where we actually put in location, and then we kind of string interpolate a bunch of different fields on our address object on the user to come up with this string Hunters Creek Drive, San Antonio, 98234. That's basically about it. This this profile item generator here. Again, we're making use of Hilt at inject constructor, so we can very easily uh, you know test this. We can write some test cases here for you know this particular function. This data class you know could be in its own class, not a big deal. Um, but I left it in here because it's kind of specific to what this generator is doing. So uh, outside of that, let's see if there's anything else in the controller. Um, yeah, I guess we just have our signed out and signed in epoxy models, which are pretty straightforward. So if we go ahead and take a look at our signed out epoxy model, right, we are using that view binding Kotlin model with our signed out XML file, right, which was just that one button. And we simply just set an on click listener, we then call our on sign in, which is that lambda that's passed into us with string string, and that is our username and our password. Uh, and then you know, that information gets consumed right here inside of this Lambda that's defined right there. Quickly bouncing down to our signed in item epoxy model, very straightforward stuff, the exact same thing. We basically just have, uh, you know, the information that is from this data class here. We just kind of take all of that stuff out and uh, an on click for specific scenarios. Again, we just have our signed in uh, XML file that we're using, and then it's just very straightforward. This bind function is really, really simple, right? We just simply uh, set the image view, we set our text, we set an on-click listener, and we call a callback when that happens. So these items here are extremely flexible. These epoxy models are extremely flexible. We can just shove any amount of them into the controller and the screen will you know, display them accordingly. So if you're still with me here and it's making a little bit of sense, I really appreciate it. Sorry if I'm moving quick, but let me know in the comments below. And if you're still here, comment real fan to let me know you made it this far in the video. I really appreciate it. I really think this is a pretty interesting episode here. So I want to take a look at this on sign in Lambda here, right? We again, we need to just pass in a Lambda that accepts a string and a string and returns nothing. Very straightforward signature, but inside of this Lambda, what we do is we make use of our profile UI actions dot on sign in, and we pass in our username and password. And so I mentioned we'd get back to our UI actions, so we can go ahead and jump into it. Now, the concept here with our UI actions is to basically just remove unnecessary visibility where possible, right? Because if we take a look at the different functions that exist here, we, uh, we make use of our view model. Right? We make use of the viewmodel.login function, the viewmodel.logout function, and then eventually maybe we're going to be able to you know, do something in these other scenarios as well. The reason we kind of have this UI actions is we inject our view model as the constructor, and then internally we can expose functions that do 
that, that interact with the view model but are not the actual view model. So the concept here is we don't want the epoxy controller itself to have access straight to the view model because the view model might have a bunch of other functions involved. The view model might have a bunch of other uh, you know, things available publicly speaking to anyone who owns a reference, but that isn't relevant for our controller. So our UI actions here is just a simple way to define, you know, basically an interface between our controller and our view model because they don't really need to know about one another. They just need to be, you know, coupled, the actions need to be coupled to the controller and not the controller coupled to the view model. So if that doesn't make sense, it's not the end of the world. You definitely can use a view model inside of the controller and it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Uh, but it's just a little bit better practice sometimes to define, you know, a certain contract um, and, and certain re reduced visibility where possible. But we can very easily see here, we have the on sign in function, we have a username and password, and this is just a pass through method, right? Viewmodel.login. And then that kicks off all of our work here that we've already done in a previous episode. If you've missed it, go ahead and check it out. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so that's the idea of our UI actions here. We also then have basically a way to interact with these different items that are selected. So we can see when you click the logout function, uh, the logout row, which we are denoting based on the ID of the resource that we're using here. So it's not perfect, but it works for now. Um, we can see here that we very easily call viewmodel.logout, which just updates our store and copies our user to be null. Um, and then I left a comment here for you. Traditionally, you'd also make a uh, call to the back end, right? Maybe some kind of like logout call or, or clear session cache, whatever the case is. But we don't have a back end here that we're doing that with. So we just manipulate something locally. And then as we do that, we see that our you know, UI kind of reacts accordingly and we go back to that null state. Pretty simple stuff, pretty straightforward. Our profile UI actions is created inside of our fragment with the reference to our auth view model, which is provided to us here um, via the view models function. And then we just simply take that UI actions and we just pass that into the epoxy controller. And everything is all connected up here. This uh, significantly reduces the uh, code in the fragment, which is really, really nice, right? We just basically listen to our state of our user, pass that into our epoxy controller, update a few items here and there, uh, and then everything else works the way that it should. The different states that we see here is represented in uh, epoxy. So if we go ahead and you know sign out and we want to have an input field where we have uh, you know username and password, we can very easily do that. And all of this code is not going to change. The only thing that's going to have to change is maybe the how the epoxy model itself works. Um, obviously, we're going to have a few different views inside of here that we're going to be able to make you know, use of and, and listen for and that kind of stuff. But the actual UI and the flow and the data flow and all that kind of stuff is going to be the same, you know, specifically from the fragment level and any of these other high level hooks like our view model and that kind of stuff. So I think that about covers it. Um, again, apologies if I move through this a little quick. I know it's just a lot of text and not a lot of, um, you know, getting your hands dirty with it. But please feel free to pull down the code on GitHub. It is available for everyone. Uh, publicly speaking, and uh, you know you can kind of see how the dots all connect, uh, you know, firsthand. Sometimes that's a little bit easier, but it's very very simple. The point is uh, that we built this whole thing with epoxy or basically some recycler view implementation, and everything just kind of reacts. We don't have the most glorious error handling, but you know, for the sake of this demo, that is okay. Um, I hope you appreciate the content here. Please smash that like button if you made it this far. Uh, subscribe if you guys are brand new. Very happy to be bringing more content for you, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.